did you know that Mom Opar made a double overhead cam 426 Hemi? I didn't either. There is no Welcome back, fam, to the MQ Network. I am Will Hemi, and I got some interesting uh, facts here today that blew my mind. Uh, as you know, Mopar has been going through it over the past four or five years with these cafe standards and with the, you know, the EV mandates coming up in California and. and rest of the country so they have abandoned the Hemi V8 as a as a force of motivation for our beloved Mopar vehicles and you know like I've always said why don't they just make a better one or a more fuel efficient one that can help ease the tide I mean of course that just wouldn't happen you know the Hemi is just too powerful too big too juicy it would never be a 30, 40 mile per hour, a mile per gallon car, so whatever, I gave it up. But I had always wondered what would be the situation if they did like a double overhead cam, you know, that's the modern technology, right? That would make it like a coyote, you know, the coyotes came through, they're still making them. And you know, they got more power and all this other stuff. Well, Mopar beat me to it. Apparently, back in 1964, when they were a uh, heavy NASCAR racing, right? Uh, there was a Ford, I believe it was, was, was trying to come out with this 427 with an overhead cam. And they put it together and scared the hell out of everybody because, you know, Mopar was dominating. The Hemi, the 426 Hemi was dominating uh, NASCAR at the time. But here comes Ford with the overhead cam idea. And they start putting it together. And Mopar says, uh oh, we're going double overhead cam. Holy crap. They came out with a double overhead cam 426 in 1964. That engine was capable of 500 plus horsepower, should have been capable of 500 plus horsepower, naturally aspirated. And I mean, you know, back then, the, the, the Hemis were putting out pretty much fours. You know, that's what they were claiming. I mean, you know, it, it's hard to tell what the real numbers were, but just as Mopar had decided to build a prototype or two NASCAR outlawed the camera or the overhead cam engine. So Ford scrapped theirs and Mopar had built two. And yeah, but they didn't work out too well. The one that they actually spun with an electric motor instead of a transmission, they reverse spun it to a nice juicy RPM, started tearing up the lifter bosses, you know, under the cam right on top of the head, it, just, it did not su succeed. But they ended up pulling the whole project too because of the same thing, so it never came to fruition, but the idea was out there. I got a bunch of pictures, a whole lot of pictures of this thing. Uh, it's amazing, it was a great idea, but did it happen? No. Could it have happened? Back then, with that technology, it probably wouldn't have been no better. It would have been very heavy. The heads would have been very big. They were very big. I mean, you know, you, you ever watch graveyard cars where they stuff a 426 into some old Cuda or a Challenger, and it's like they got to take stuff off of that motor to squeeze it down in between the uh, in between the uh, fender wells. You know what I mean? On the inside, just to get it through that little area. A 426 with a double, double overhead cam, I don't think it would fit in anything. It would have been incredible. I mean, you, I guess you could drop it from the top, but it still would have probably been too wide for most of everything they were making back then. I mean, we're talking 64. That's before the Charger, before the Cuda. That was, you know, early stuff. So, it didn't happen. It was heavy. It was 
probably very unreliable, a uh, lot more working parts, and the cams were linked. There was no VVTI back in, no variable valve timing. The cams were both linked by another sprocket, so it was no adjustment whatsoever. So you had none of the benefits of variable valve timing or adjustable cam uh, gear. Um, I mean, it was a good idea, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm amazed to see that somebody had the idea. Now, you gotta wonder if we did it now, 2024, um, could it be done? Now, Ford successfully upgraded their naturally aspirated 5.0 V8 up to a Coyote, which essentially did the same thing. They made it with bigger, you know, bigger head and all that stuff, but old double over cam, got a lot more power out of it. Could we do the same thing with the Hemi? Maybe so, but it would have to be a smaller one, guaranteed, especially if it's gonna fit in that new Charger EV thing, uh, you know, the six pack Charger, whatever you wanna call it. It would have to be smaller, it'd have to be five point something or other, and it would, it would be heavier. It'll make the car a little bit heavier, I think so. But if you could variable valve time both camshafts <laughs> against each other, you can really work on the fuel efficiency of the motor, for sure. Um, of course, you know, we got computers now, we got PCMs that do everything for you, and the VVTI has worked beautifully in the 6.4s and the Eagle Hemis and all that stuff. So I don't see why it couldn't be adapted over to a double overhead cam. Um, it would make the engine a little bit easier to work on. Yeah, any cam issues, you don't have to rip apart the whole front end, you know what I mean? So, I mean, it will be a few little benefits. <sighs> the Coyote motor is really solid, really reliable, does its thing. Now, the other option that Mopar has right now, since, of course, we're getting the Hemi back and the V8 mandates, I mean, the Hemi mandates are out the window, the V8s are coming back, or some are staying. We don't have cars right now to put V8s in, but we got the Durango, we got the Ram, and that's where they'll be for a minute, like everybody. Poor GM, they got nothing, but the Cadillac, and that's like, a, you know, it's nice. But nevertheless, uh, the other way they could go would be a single overhead cam in the new Hemi, with the, uh, like the Viper had, the variable, cam in itself was adjustable on itself so you could the intake load and the, and the uh, exhaust loads were separately adjustable on one camshaft that technology would be beautiful and probably a lot simpler a lot easier to recreate onto the uh, new Hemi the new generation Hemi that may or may not come to fruition but I, something I would like to see I don't know. We got another another uh, long list of vehicles that uh, people would love to buy with the big juicy Hemi in it. So, if there's some way that we can keep this Hemi under our right feet for the next generation, I'm cool with it. So, I don't know. Keep 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 your eyes to the sky. Keep hoping for the best. I think we can do this. Thank you for watching.